of a, been a magician for 30 years, a balloon entertainer for 30 years, and he's entertained in 12 countries. Um, and most recently, he was in India, where tourists never go. He has that in capital letters in his notes. So um, I want to introduce Joe White, who is going to uh, share about his time in um, India and his balloon ministry. Oh, well, I can't twist and do that, too. Oh. Let me talk, start with, okay. let me do with my finger stuff. Okay. And then I'll grab if you can't hear Joe, let If you can't hear Joe, let me know, and I'll hold the microphone for him. When I say there's places that tourists do not go, uh -huh. I'm not talking about the tourist places. You'll go to those places no trouble at all. Where you will not go is probably the small uh, towns where there might be a church. Not likely you're going to get inside a school where there's a small school out in the country where the, most of the kids are going to come in barefoot or at the school of a thousand kids yeah. in the city. Those are places that the tourists never get to. I was blessed to work with Campus Crusade for Christ for 21 days. We did 56 shows in 21 days. Generally, two, not less than two, and not more than five shows a day. So for me, that was kind of a bucket trip. One of the things I did at all the schools, because in India it's very difficult to twist balloons because of the weather. The weather just sucks the moisture out of the balloon, and I've almost got to do them live. I cannot do them ahead like I did here. But I would pick the most senior woman I could find, whether she was on staff or sweeping the floor, and do a rose for her. Something much like this. Balloons can be as simple as a one balloon dog or one balloon sword, or they can be as complex as a wedding dress. We do all that stuff. I don't. I'm pretty much a lion person. And this is for you. <laughs> Madam President. Uh, what do you mean, oh no. <laughs> I know how you think, and I know what you like. I was honored to do balloons on Royal Caribbean for four, four years. I generally planned it so I'd have about four weeks a year on top of, on the Caribbean. And I'll tell you, fellows, if you haven't been on a cruise, nobody on earth eats better than on the cruise. Now, one of the things they don't tell you for the next cruise, all those goodies you eat at dinner, you can ask them for a plate to take home. Whether it's the dessert that you like the best, or it's the main course. And of all the things you girls like, jewelry is at the top. We call it bling bling. I was on the cruise ship for the second time out in California the first time it blew up and uh, burned out 14 miles of uh, electrical cables and now what they will not tell you give me the finger <laughs> Oh, happy Rodney said I had to do some balloons. They can also be as more complex and weird as a Kama Kame Lama Spitty. And since I'm pretty sure there's no llamas in Japan. Can I have your arm? All right, let's find out how this works. Take a look at the faces. That's why I do what I do. Mike. Oh. Can you hear me better now? Oh, yeah. But the faces of kids 
Blues are a universal language. Uh, it crosses all language barriers. <laughs> when we got in India, if you were traveling more than 12 hours, you were on a train. And the trains in India are interesting. On the side of the car, they paste everybody's name on a piece of paper, and you go looking for your car. <clears throat> on, the tra on the track, it, they generally go from the evening you stay up all night and get there the next morning. And when you walk across the platform, don't step on anybody. People are laying down on the, in a platform. They're just plopped on the floor with a, car, a scarf over their head. Their bathroom isn't like ours. This is more of an international bathroom. Whenever I looked for the bathroom, I said, I want a Western bathroom. Notice there's no toilet paper. I always carry my own all-purpose paper anywhere I travel. It is, trust me, if you travel, carry that AP. All the kids like to be on stage. One of the, and controlling the crowds if you've got 500 kids in the audience and the magician says, I need a volunteer, this is not necessarily the best thing to say. Because they will rush the stage. And there's more of them than there is of you. And shouting doesn't work. So the easiest way is to have them sit still, keep their hands down, walk out among them, and look for the right pair of eyes. We brought up volunteers for most everything that we did. Right here we're doing the Indian flag. It's a mismade Indian flag. And my wife was a was straight person. She's the one who stole part of the flag. There are some people and critters who stand fast. There was more than a thousand kids out in the audience. This speaker was booming the entire time the program took place. But do you think that pigeon would budge or move? <laughs> Not on your life. Sometimes it's the life is the same way. You make a decision, you've got a dedicated task, you just stand fast and don't move. There's more kids. It was like that at every performance. We got to do it for more than 30,000 kids and uh, a few communities. That is a drug that takes me up. Around the world, people sometimes think that folks in other countries are lazy. They are not lazy. Generally, they're either ignorant because no one ever showed him how to plant something or do something. This gentleman, think about it. Would you like to run a one-room store and you're the only person there? That's it? Running that 12 hours a day? Mm. Notice that India, uh, you, I don't know if I've got a picture of it or not, but I don't think they have trash collection at all. Some of that trash is just left out to rot over the years. If there's broken stone or rubble, it just stays there. They're hard workers. We saw them putting in sewers while we were there. And they were putting them in with pickaxes and shovels and buckets. And, and the little spindly arm per people, whom I would not, you know, do a arm wrestle with, were the guys who were digging up and moving the soil one bucket at a time. Mm -hmm. We were there in that part of India for three weeks and never saw a blade of grass except at one tourist temple where it was watered. They hadn't had water in, in weeks and months. Not a single blade of grass, not a single weed. And that was something I had to get over. The trees were great and the bushes were beautiful. It was a lovely land and lovely people, but if they could not get the roots down to the sewer, they didn't grow. Schools, by and large, the ones we went to mostly, 
were private schools. A lot of them were Christian schools. St. Thomas, run by nuns. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons we could get in. If you look up there, you see red. All the teachers are wearing red saris. When a lady comes of age, she moves from what you might think of the western clothes, usually to a sari, which is a long strip of cloth that can be worn more ways than I can count. India has over 1,600 individual languages. It's a country more divided than we can imagine. How a person wears the turban on their head, or the sari, will tell them where they came from. It's like in the U.S., if you hear someone talk, and they got the twang, you immediately think they're from a certain spot. Or sometimes it's, it's pail or bucket. But we know, have a good idea. Imagine if there were 1,600. In India, something is not old unless it's been around for a thousand years. We celebrate a hundred years. We have no concept here in America about a thousand. I want you to look at that picture and look at the kids. Sometimes you will learn more from what you do not see than what you do see. Take a minute in your mind and see what's missing. Every kid is the same color. There are no white kids, there are no black kids, there are no Asian kids, zero. Every kid's hair is a similar cut or the same color. There are no purple hairs, there are no blondes, there are no greens or pinks. There are no stacked on top of your head. Generally speaking, it's either straight for the girls or braided in pigtails someplace. It's a very homogenous society. When the magicians would leave a venue, we understood what Elvis felt like, except we were walking, th wading through munchkins, and all they wanted to do was touch you, to, to touch your hand, to shake your hand, and you didn't dare stop to shake their hand because you had 500 kids who wanted to shake your hand and you had to be at another school in two hours and set up. So we learned to just sort of put our hands together in Indian style and, and just nod and run. <laughs> and when we got to the car, we rolled up the window because if you didn't roll up the window, they would stick their hands in that window and clog it up. But notice what's missing. It's a very homogenous, one kind of people society. No matter what I do, whether it was simple things like the big flower um, ring, the kids loved it. Why? They had never seen it before. They had not the animal twist balloons that I use virtually do not exist in a lot of countries. When I was in Africa, it was an absolutely zero, zero. In India, I have some people I supply balloons to, and they're special because they know how to make a dog. You know, for, after 30 years, making a dog is not exciting to me anymore. <laughs> Putting a steak knife in the dog, now that's more interesting. Um, I had bypass surgery about three weeks ago, and I've got to tell you, the doctor foiled me for the first time in 30 years. I was not able to put a scalpel in a balloon after you blow up the balloon. That's the first time I've failed. Uh, he had sharp scalpels. <laughs> when you go shopping, my favorite place to shop is down the street where there's these little tiny vendors. This is a, a cooking pots lunch pails, everything is stainless steel. Every vendor has his own tiny little space, and maybe it's clothing, maybe it's steel like here, whatever it is, they specialize in something. And you, it's like going to a swap meet. You have no idea what you're gonna find. And it's my favorite place to shop, because it's like, who knows what's gonna turn up? They love color. At the back of a, a dirt wagon, a farm wagon, there's a tiger on it. The most common thing you see on the back of vehicles, whether they're commercial 
or not is the words, please honk. As soon as you get near the truck, they want you to honk so that they don't accidentally slip over and hit you. In Indian traffic, rules and laws are traffic suggestions. <laughs> if there is space for a two-wheeler to get in, there will be a two-wheeler get in. And that two-wheeler is the family car, which means dad's on the front, well, the handlebars. There's one or two kids in front of him, generally one kid behind him, and mom gets about six inches of the back, and guess who carries all the groceries? Mom. How she sticks to that six inches, I do not know. Um, but she does. And you'll see that commonly through traffic. <coughs> That's my business card. I'm still going strong for as long as I can. Thank you for your very kind attention. Questions, yes. Uh, did you speak in English in all your presentations? Is yes. Is that a common language for the schools? Um, internationally, English is almost a second language in many countries. Uh, it's very common to have English taught in the schools with the country language and possibly a third language. Very common is Chinese. So if you speak slowly, you can't talk fast and never understand it. But if you speak slowly, they will normally understand it. Mostly, I did it um, to music. Because everybody understands music, and my art is more visual. But if I had done it to English, I would have told stories like about Longinus, the centurion who crucified Christ. And, and I tell stories about David and Goliath, where Goliath was the underdog. And David took advantage of him. Uh, but I'm very fond of telling you the rest of the story. Slingers compete at 600 feet. And Goliath had no competition at 600 feet. Any more questions? Yes, sir. How did you get started in this business? <clears throat> I twisted the dog about 30 years ago. We were doing a uh, kids crusade at our church. And they sent me to the Fellowship of Christian Magicians. And I gotta warn you, you go into one of those places and they do all of it. They do all the visual arts and I found that balloons is what I like. Uh, my wife at that time, she got into puppets. Oh gosh, did she get into puppets. Puppeteers carry everything under the sun. It's like you need a, a truck to carry all this stuff. For balloons, I could operate off a half hour just with what I got in my pocket. And, and the only limit in balloons is your imagination. So I've been going to balloon conferences and clown conferences. I even got, God even provided for me to go to London, England and teach at an international conference for free. That was kind of cool. Yes. I think you used the expression twist balloons. Does that mean they're... In America, it's called twisting. twisting. If you go over to Europe, they call it modeling. Okay. But they're special thickness or something? That nope, you... they're long skinny balloons. They blow up sometimes? Yeah, they explode sometimes. You will get them explode <laughs> in your face. At that point, glasses are an advantage. <laughs> uh, they come in, the most common, we're using 260s, which means it's two inches in diameter and it's 60 inches long. And we use 360, three inches in diameter, 60 inches long. Three inches in diameter. Three inches in diameter, yeah. Six inches long. That's why I make my swords and bazookas out of them. Um, because in balloons and boys especially, size does matter. I call it the Godzilla principle. If you've got a sword that's five feet long and three inches in diameter, you will want the kid whose sword is two inches in diameter. Yeah, size does matter. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Who supports you on a trip like this trip to England? <laughs> I get there blow by blow. Uh, I'm in the farmer's market most of the time, and the tips I take <coughs> in is what, we put them aside in a savings loan, and I've got enough to go back, I'm going back to India in August. And I'll spend three more weeks in India in August. Uh, and I've got enough for one ticket. If the wife changes her mind, 
then I had to blow up more balloons. <laughs> I have another question. I just uh, realized you didn't blow those balloons up. I had bypass surgery three weeks ago. Okay. But and I'm 68. Ten years ago, I blew up two and three balloons at one time. No trouble. Age catches up with you. You're a young man. Really? <laughs> I, now, I now go to mechanics. You know, for, for something like today, I use the hand pump. If I'm going to be doing more, like I've got Christmas parties coming up, I've got a little electric pump that a friend made for me. Okay. You just push the button, zzzz, it goes. I didn't bring it today because it's, it's too noisy for a quiet room like this. Well, we're not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I counted up. Doing balloons on the cruise ships for four years, where you cannot get resupplied for two weeks, it helps you plan out what colors you need and what spaces you need. And I'm going to close, because I didn't show you any magic. Magic is helping you see what isn't there. And every magician requires a rabbit. And I brought my rabbit today. His name is Wrinkles. This is the rabbit hole. But please notice that the salesmen come to the front door, don't they? Yes. But grandfathers and grandmothers, we don't go to the front door. We know the back door is unlocked. If I have a week that I'm not in church, then I am definitely blue, because I haven't been fed for the week. In India, I was told not to wear the cross. It can get you beaten. Last week, my contact in India said one of the churches were raided and the men, women, and kids were beaten just for their faith. Sorry about that. Okay. His, doesn't bother me, I do the same thing. His name is Wrinkles. But since every magician has to produce a rabbit, <laughs> I'm sure he's not any bigger, but that's, that's it. <laughs> now, now, rabbits are a great deal like grandfathers. And the grandmothers in here know about that. If you feed a grandfather, and Thanksgiving is coming up, you know that we're going to go in the living room and find a nice, comfortable chair and sit down, and what are we going to do? Sleep football. No, we're going to go to sleep. <laughs> That's just it. Thank you for letting me know.